To try and larch some fiscal sense into them, a team of executives from GM went over to Sweden and said, look, this is a Cavalier from our Vauxhall division. And to make your new car, what you do is change the body and the badges. That's it. Nice and cheap. Body and badges. Saab ignored them so completely that their new 900 shattered the third of its components with the Cavalier. When the time came to replace the 900 with the 93, the General Motors executives went over to Sweden again and said, OK, here is the Vauxhall Vectra. Now, this time, we mean it. Only change the body and the badges. Nothing else. Guess what? The Swedes went even more mental. They changed so much that even the wheelbase was different. At one point, a General Motors accountant went over to Sweden to see why Saab was costing them so much money. And he got into the new 93, turned on the sat-nav and thought, wait a minute. That's not one of our systems. And he was right, it wasn't. Saab had developed at vast expense their own system because they thought GM's wasn't good enough. Eventually, General Motors had had enough. And in 2010, as Saab was finishing the job of turning the Vauxhall insignia into the completely different 95, the Detroit Giants pulled the plug. The brand itself will have some residual value, but the company's facilities are likely to be broken up and sold. At the last minute, a buyer was found, a Dutchman who owned a small car company called Spiker. To get the money rolling in, he needed to get the new 95 into the showrooms as quickly as possible. That meant it went on sale before it was finished, and that meant it was a commercial flop. And so, in January of this year, Saab closed down for good. So this is it. This is the last ever Saab that we're in right now. Yeah. This is the final chapter. I really like the way they, they did things. I am going to miss Saab. It is a sad day. It is sad. It's a sad day too for the Swedish town of Trollhattan, where for 60 years the workforce has tried to be different, to be better, to think outside the box. And of course it's very sad for our architect friend who, from now on, we'll have to buy a 5 Series. Still, there's one crumb of comfort, because let's not forget whose engines powered the first ever jet fighter. 